everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. And today I'm back with a part two of a video and a subject I've already talked about, and that is supersets. I've already made a video with my top favorite supersets to grow my glutes, and you guys were so interested to see what my top favorite supersets are to grow your quads. So that's what we are going to do today. I won't go really deep into everything supersets and like the whole information behind it. I will link the other video right here in the screen because there I'm really like explaining in depth everything superset related, how you should implement it, what the benefits are, etc. So if you're interested in this and if you want to learn more about this, then I highly recommend you to check that video out. The reason why I'm personally such a big fan of doing supersets is because honestly for me personally, when it comes to my legs, I feel like the high volume approach and by this implementing supersets because this is a really great way to add volume to your workouts and get much more work done in a specific time frame. This has really helped me to grow my legs in general. Um, so yeah, this is just why I'm such a big fan. I will also say that this is um, like a method, training method, that is not really advice for beginners, more advanced or intermediate uh, people. So if you've been into fitness for quite some time, and you've hit a plateau, you don't really see progress anymore, or you're just bored of your training style, then I highly recommend you to throw in some supersets, preferably the supersets I'm going to show you today. And I'm sure that you will be out of that plateau in no time. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. So. We are starting with the first superset for quads and it's gonna be the leg press. And we are going to superset it with the leg press as well. Um, I love to use different stances on this machine because by tweaking your feet stance, you can really put a different emphasis on a different area on your quadriceps. With the shoulder width stance, you're basically focusing all around the quadriceps. With the closed stance, you're focusing more on the inner portion of the quadriceps, like the teardrop, as we say. What I love to do is first, you want to keep your feet as low as possible on the platform because the higher you put your feet, the more emphasis you will put on your hamstrings and glutes when being in the eccentric phase. So you want to have your feet like all the way to the bottom. And I like to do this exercise first with a more like shoulder width stance like this, toes pointing straight forward in line with your knees, perform around 10 reps. And then secondly, put your feet completely together like so. Make sure your knees are also together. They may not be open while doing the exercise, they always have to be in line with your toes and then push another 10 reps. One. Two. Three. You also don't want to push with your hands because this way you're taking away the work from your quads. Five. Ten. Another thing you have to keep attention to with this exercise is don't like let it come all the way down and bounce because this way you're losing tension on the quadriceps as well. So you want to have a nice controlled eccentric phase and then push again. All right, so supersetting this with a close stance and again going for 10 reps. One. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, and by this way, they are already pumped. This is all you need. How to make it even more intense and more, and create an even bigger, bigger pump is, um, 
So we did now like a shoulder width stance and then close together. Sometimes I add a third stance and start like really wide, shoulder width close. But then you're really high rep. And trust me, the soreness is crazy. So I would advise to start with this. Once you get comfortable with doing this with heavy weights, then you can uh, add the additional uh, feet stance if you want. So yeah, that was the first one. Two percent number two. And I'm so lucky because um, it's actually the hack squat and the leg extension. And um, when I do the hack squat, I always needed to do it with this machine, which is not really like a hack squat. It's more like a reverse hack squat, more great to, for hamstrings and glutes. Um, but, ta-da! They have, um, like the owner bought this new hack squat machine. Like this is a real hack squat. And yeah, it's just been here for like three days or so. I haven't even been testing it out yet. So I'm very curious how it will feel. But one thing guys, if you want to grow your legs, if you want to build strength, if you want to build muscle mass, this is gonna be your best friend. You don't necessarily need to be very strong at a barbell squat, because I know it's very technical and it's not for everyone. But if you find like you struggle with barbell squats, please use this machine and I promise you, you will get the same results. Um, I will first test what the weight is on this machine. Oh my God. Because <laughs> some machines are heavier than others. So let me first check that out. Ah, oh, the stretch, amazing. But also pain in the ass. It's quite light, so let's throw up some weights. I think that will work. So, I love to superset the hack squat with a leg extension. Why? Because this is a compound exercise. I try to keep my reps like, I would not say super low, because super low to me is like three to five reps. I try to stay within a rep range of six to like 12 reps, uh, preferably around a 10. And for the leg extension, I love to go like really high rep and really go like until failure over there. So. That's what we are going to do. Again, here for the hack squat, you don't want to put your feet too far away. Neither too close, because you really have to find like the sweet spot. It also depends on your height. Like this is for me the best, yeah. Toes pointing straight forward in line with your knees. Go all the way down until you hit the bottom. Push up. Don't overextend your knees because this is really damaging your knees. So always keep like a slight bend and also have the tension on your quads go down. Two. Ten. Okay, like ascension. Here you want to pick like a moderate weight where you can do like 15 to 20 reps with. And then one thing I see a lot of people do is put this like the back seat too much forward. And so they are like, so please try to put the, the thing here more backwards because if you, the back seat, if you lay a little bit more like this and it's not even enough for me, like, like so, you see I'm basically lying a little bit backwards. You will have so much more stretch and activation of the quadriceps. It really makes a big difference. And also, 
point your toes downward to the floor for extra tension. Four, five, Ten. always keep a brief pause at the top, 11. lactic acid build up in the quads. It's insane. Woo. Third superset of today is, of course, a barbell uh, squat, back squat. And we are going to superset this with the CC squat, the exercise, which I get so much hate on on social media. But you know what? For me, it works. And if I do remember correctly, Tom Platz did a lot as well. So, hmm. I think it might be a really great exercise if performed correctly and if performed with, you know, with, you know, with brains. With brains, yeah, like this. If I do it in superset, of course, I'm going super high rep. Um, it actually, I actually apply the same rules and rep range as with the hack squat. So I would say stay within a rep range of six to 12 reps. Try to go really heavy, progressive overload. And this is also, by the way, um, something that you have to apply to every exercise you do. If, if muscle building is the goal, you always need to progressive overload, even if you're doing a superset, okay? So, six to 12 reps for the CC squat. I'm going to do this body weight and, performs, uh, and perform as many reps as possible, which is also uh, seen as going to failure, okay? Let's go. So again, with the barbell squat, put your feet around shoulder width. I'm putting them slightly more narrow because this is just my squat stance. Toes pointing straight forward or slightly outwards, but make sure again that your knees are in line with your toes. Then take a deep breath. Go all the way down. Bam. Don't overextend the knees again. Always keep a slight bend controlled eccentrics. Go as deep as you can. Up, all right? Three. Nine. Ten. No. When it comes to the CC squat, a mistake I see very often is people do like this. They basically do like a squat movement. But by leaning forward with your torso, you're basically limiting your range of motion. You're limiting the stretch in your quadriceps. And it's basically not the most optimal way to perform the CC squat. What you wanna do is make sure your feet are locked in very tight and basically think like someone is pushing you backwards. Okay? Keep an upright position, go up. Don't come over like this, but like this. Slide bent in the knees again. Keep the tension. Go down, up, down, up. And basically, this one should be even lower for me. You see, the range of motion, the stretch, bam. It's gonna be way harder as well. Oh. 
and that's it. Oh my goodness. Oh, this, this machine is so horrible. Wow. But oh so good. <laughs> Feels like a workout for the people, as I said. Uh, during the hex squat for the people that have uh, difficulty with doing a barbell squat because as I said it's very technical and you basically need quite a good ankle mobility for this not everyone has this not everyone wants to work on this let's be honest um, I have an alternative for you and it's called the cyclist squat you take like a big plate go stand on it with your heels toes pointing straight forward have the barbell on your neck and basically do the same movement as just with your feet on the ground. Now, what's the big difference with this is because your heels are elevated, even though you're all the way down, you're still in a 90 degree angle, which is not the case when you're doing a barbell squat all the way down. The angle is much more like this. As I said, much more ankle mobility. Here, you don't need this. You have a 90 degree angle. Go down. Up. Go down. Up. With this squat variation, you can basically have the same depth as with a regular squat and less technique is required. So, yeah, I hope this helps. For the CC squat, I have two alternatives as well. One is a little bit more advanced and the other one is more beginner friendly because I also know that no, not all gyms has this specific uh, CC squat machine. So the more advanced version is you grab something or if you're ultra advanced, um, you can just do it without holding anything. So feet together and go down. Put your knees as far forward as possible. Keep your uh, body in one straight line. Push up, tight core. Up. 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 What I see a lot of people do is like this and then come up like this you basically take away like the whole point of the exercise. Then the beginner friendly exercise, you take a mat, go sit like this, keep a straight upper body, tight core, go down as deep as you can, up, down, keep constant tension, up. When you go too much backwards, you see my knees are coming off the floor. This is too much range of motion. Your knee should always stay on the floor, okay? So for me, this is like my limit range of motion and I should go up again, okay? So that was it guys, I really hope it was helpful and you enjoyed watching the video and you're going to implement the supersets into your own training routine. I'm very excited for this and how you will experience it. Also, quick side note, TLF is currently having I think around 30% off site-wise. They also recently launched these new pump covers in different colors. They are super cute. I always love to put them like so. You know, like you get a little bit of glutes. Um, so yeah, if you want to check it out, I will put the shopping link and my discount in the description box of the video. And now it's time to head home because I'm hungry. And yeah, let's do this. I don't know about you, but I think it's so crazy how fast dark it comes. Like we drove from the gym home. I've been home for like 15 minutes or so. And now it's dark outside. It's crazy. I'm like here with my light boxes and stuff. I'm so not ready for this winter period. I don't know. I actually received a whole new package with products from my protein yesterday. 
with my monthly order. And I'm gonna give this new clear whey protein flavor a go. It's the tropical dragon fruit. It's a new flavor actually, and I'm very excited. It seems to be very delicious. So far, I've not really have had like a flavor which I absolutely think is disgusting. Um, peach tea will forever be my ultimate favorite flavor, but maybe this one will be even better. So I will put this here and let the foam go away. I didn't order like a bunch of new products, it just kind of my staples, which I use every day or almost every day. Like the clear way is something I use every single day. Um, usually once, sometimes twice, depends on my regular meals and how I've been eating that day. Yeah, I already did the unboxing of my um, story. So this is why it's open already. But I ordered again, the clear protein uh, water bottles, which I always take with me to the gym. Super, super easy. I always make sure there are a couple in the fridge cold, um, so I can just grab them with me and go to the gym. It's super refreshing. They contain 20 grams of protein and they actually contain zero sugar as well. Uh, I also ordered the Flav powders and then also the Flav drops. Um, this time in the cheesecake flavor, I do have these in like a lot of different other flavors. This is something quite new, it's the Flav powder and this is in the flavor cereal milk. Now the difference between the two is like this you can add in your yogurt, quark or even in your coffee. The Flav powders, uh, it's a powder as the name can tell and they contain like little chunks in it. Um, so not really to recommend to put into your coffee, but I think this one is really tasty to put into your yogurt bowl. Still have to try it out, so I'm very curious. Can you hear that? I always make sure I've got some protein bars at home just for an easy snack on the go. These are the crispy layered white chocolate peanuts. I must say they do look very delicious. I haven't tried them, so I'm very curious if it's something I like. Some other protein bars, which I can highly recommend you, are these oat bakes, chocolate, so freaking delicious. Um, they contain 18 grams of protein. They are a little bit more caloric dense because it's an oat bar. But um, yeah, if you ask me, I think these are really great as a pre-workout meal or even a post-workout meal. These are my absolutely favorites. These are the hazelnut whips. Kind of reminds me uh, of the Kinder Bueno. Then I also ordered the ashwagandha gummies and then also some krill oil. Now the ashwagandha gummies are actually very helpful whenever you're super stressed or when you are dealing with a lot of anxiety. And then the krill oil capsules are a really great source of omega-3, um, which is also great to maintain a healthy heart. So really recommend to too to get these into your house. Um, yeah, anyway, what I wanted to say is that um, first, let me take a sip of this protein shake and try out this flavor. Oh, that was not the greatest idea. It's not bad at all. It's, I would say between fruity and candy or so. It's not bad, but I still prefer the peach tea. So what I wanted to say is that my protein is currently having a big sell on their entire website, even on the Clearway Isolate and the Clearway Vegan, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, they are running a 30% off at the moment through my shopping link and my discount code. 
I don't know how long the sale will last, but this is the perfect time if you want to stack up on your favorite supplements or if you want to try out some new products, um, perhaps some products I've shown you and which I implement into my daily routine. Now, for the Clear Whey Protein, I know this is, I can say like, oh, I love this flavor and this is really great and perhaps you order it and you're not really satisfied with it. Now, something that uh, my protein has is they sell samples. So you can order some samples from a lot of different uh, flavors and try them out yourself. And even those samples are also on sale. So I highly recommend you to perhaps um, order the samples if you're unsure about which flavor will be your favorite and just try them all out and see which one you like best. But yeah, anyways, thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope this video was helpful and uh, will give you some inspiration and tips to apply onto your own training. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>